This week on The Droids, we're talking about Chapter 11 of The Mandalorian from Season 2, The Heiress. The Mando is out to sea in this episode, meet some new friends, has some new adventures, and where does this take the series now? So much to talk about on this week's episode of The Droids. Welcome back to the Droids. You're looking for a Star Wars podcast. Alongside Ryan, Chris, and Sam, I am Mike. Thrilled to have the foursome back together. The droids are all here to talk about. And guys, I want four chowders all around. Anybody else want some chowder right <laughs> oh, now? Because yeah. I really feel like I could go for some quid <laughs> chowder. Real big <laughs> chowder head over here. Oh, I'm a big chowder head. It reminded me of the um, the Matrix, what they eat in the real world. Oh, yeah. Oh. oh right, though, like for uh, all you that like mouse is eating when he's like, "You like the the woman in the red dress?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's my Where mouse. It says, Tastes Chucky like chicken. Falling off. Yeah. Fall sure. off the spoon. Yeah. So I, I believe they call that gruel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a culinary yeah, term. It, it, it's a literary term, gruel. But why don't we have more restaurants with um, tubed in service? My question <laughs> there was: Were the was the tube shooting out the creature? Was the creature in the tube? Oh, that's a very good. Or was point. it? Or, or was it a? Was or, it like a, a dish issue? Yeah. Or did I they put, put it in, in the, the, bowl, the bowl and then they put the gruel over the? Oh, like pho. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Well, I think we continue to see an extension um, in addition to the dishes that Baby Yoda can have. You know, I think mm-hmm. you order up the side of Frog Lady Eggs with your, <laughs> your chowder, with the yeah. squid chowder, and, um, you know, we've all hey. got a hearty meal. I think he's being a little bit more well-fed than some of the early episodes, so maybe yeah. he won't go after those Frog Lady Eggs, which, as we start this episode, um, of course, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, DroidsPod, Gmail, DroidsPod at gmail.com, YouTube, of course, check out those playthroughs, follow in order, you know, the whole thing. Um, but also, we didn't talk about some of the news that came out of last week, and I think this is something to discuss briefly before we get into the episode, because there's a lot to talk about in this episode. But there was some backlash to the episode based on Baby Yoda eating the eggs of the Frog Lady. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. And I understand, and we have to put ourselves in other people's situations we need to have empathy for them and what they're feeling but these were unfertilized eggs there were lots of these eggs and it's sort of dark comedy based on the fact that this baby doesn't know what is the right thing to do and i don't think it should have been taken beyond that obviously i can't speak for somebody else's experience but it just felt odd to me that this was something to be you know, concerned about and need to raise to say Lucasfilm needs to come back and put out a statement because this was so bad. I was surprised that it became an issue, and I apologize if anybody was off put by that. But it felt to me like good old fashioned Star Wars. I, yeah, I, I thought that was fun. I think, like uh, you kind of just said it. If anyone was off put by it, I think just in in its own as an action scene, it is just off putting. I think that's probably why people got upset. I think yeah, it probably think made it... everyone feel things that they didn't want to feel <laughs> at a certain uh, moment. Cause yeah. baby Yoda is so cute and adorable. So, so yeah, I could, I could see why some people would be upset. I don't think it was controversial or, or, or in my opinion, but I think, uh, uh, it was some dark humor and I thought it, I thought they played the scene really nice. Yeah. And we discussed it last week about how it, it did play as, strangely odd like it just it's strangely odd it played as a bit strange tonally um i i I didn't i certainly didn't find it uh uh offensive as chris said i oh if someone was genuinely like um like disturbed by it then you know i that's obvious everybody has their own experience so it's like you know that they have a right to feel that way i i don't you know i certainly don't think that the uh the makers of the show meant for this to turn into a a big discussion on the internet but i think the thing about it is like horror movies are disturbing thrillers are disturbing there's disturbing moments but the fact that it 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 turned up in people that lucasfilm was making you know almost a a callous not commentary but callous action in the heart of like eating someone's babies these were unfertilized eggs we saw the end result in this next episode that they do have their frog baby and, and things are, are looking up. And he didn't eat that. And I, and I just, I don't know. I thought it was just like taking it too far. That's not what the show was doing, and it took it too far. But 
everybody yeah, has I their think, own opinion. So to me, the only thing, and we again, we, I refer you to the last episode where we talk about this. There, the thing that was strange wasn't that he was like eating eggs. It's that they established right beforehand how much this character, the yeah. frog lady, who we are supposed to be very endeared to, cared about them. So I was like, these are kind of at odds with each other from a storytelling standpoint. But I also didn't feel like it was like a big part of the episode. It was just yeah. kind of this throwaway yeah. joke. Yeah. We, so we talked about it last week, as you said, Ryan. I think it was yeah. just news that Lucasfilm had to sure. kind of come out with a statement after that. So yeah. Chapter 11, The Heiress, uh, mm. has really <laughs> wall-to-wall great moments in this episode. We don't Ooh. need to do full uh, breakdown of every scene, but you know, I felt like at times the show continues to surprise me. It has me on the edge of my seat with some adrenaline. I love the start of the episode with the way they drop in and the way they have to deal with it and then some of the comedic reactions of the Mon Calamar. I, this was a, to me, extension of what we've seen so far in the first two episodes as they continue to build off of this new construct of the show. And I really like dipping back into some of these other characters. They, this is what we think of, or at least I, I took away, like the cinematic universe of Marvel had so much base story for everything they did. And now with The Mandalorian, they're like, we've got this world we've created in the animated show. Why not? pull from what works from that and bring it into this show. And I, and I appreciate that. Hmm. Yeah. I, Ryan I doesn't agree. The, it doesn't sound like Ryan agrees no. at all. No. Uh, I, I really liked, um, I, I, you, there's a lot to unpack in what you just said, Mike. I think that the, the first thing was like, I, I'm loving season two's cold opens. They are like, they're really effective. Every episode has a really like strong and effective cold open. And I just wanted to, since I wasn't on the pod last week, uh, when I listened through, you guys nailed it. Just the idea that there's a stronger, you know, thematic core story to the season, Mm -hmm. that he has a mission, he has a, you know, he's been quested, and that each episode is just like an interruption in that quest is like, that's the structure that they were not hitting on successfully season one that's like working really, really well. Um, I, I thought the cold open was great i thought it was like really well timed and really funny um in terms of like the mon calamar stuff i'm like i don't know like it didn't it it worked for me in live action but i'm like that actually i would say is like that feels very different than the mon calamar that we see in clone wars to me Mm -hmm. but like that's i'm okay with that like i don't need it so sam uh they're like there's like a whole arc in season four or five where they they spend like there's like the defense of like the Mon Calamar homeworld, and it's like they're extremely like technologically proficient. They have this like beautifully like designed. And, oh, like, so to have world. him be so, a, a fish hand or a dock hand, right? Yeah, they, it was weird. It was weird that it was like so. I, again, way out of order. But like the the kind of reveal at the end is like he's essentially like duct taped and fish netted the the. <laughs> Uh, yeah. the razor crest yeah, back together and i'm like back well, that doesn't feel some... yeah but look you but know what i still enjoyed you... it I, uh, so for me it worked it's just I, I i'm sort of counteracting the point you were making about like pulling from the specific world they've already created i'm like well they're playing well, i mean the I, I wasn't i wasn't seeing so much the mon calmar as that as more of what we saw with the other mandalorians but i do want to say i, yes, I like it yes Let's not paint with a broad brush. You know, we generalize. We can't say everyone of a race is technologically advanced. Some people get ostracized. Some people have to go work at the docks because they couldn't handle the advanced technology. So there's all kinds of Mon Calamar in the sea. (laughs) There you go. There's many Mon Calamar in the sea. They weren't (laughs) on Mon Calamar, right? No, I don't believe they were. It was Trask. Yes, yes, yes. It was the... Some kind of Boston type planet, from what I understand, <laughs> a very Boston type <laughs> planet. Well, they had, the they, had, they had the sweaters. They had the sweaters. Yeah, there were the knives out sweaters. Yeah, I, I, I liked it. I mean, I think I, I kind of go with Sam's point. I, I guess you're right, though. We're we're seeing just a different angle of this uh, uh, group, the Mon Calamari. Um, but I think the touching back on just the introduction of kind of the characters from the Clone Wars and things like this. Um, I, I think it's just kind of becoming a little more apparent each episode that John Favreau's scope of knowing like Mandalorian lore and some of this outer world Star Wars stuff just comes from the episodes that he was in in the Clone Wars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so I see yeah. him kind of just pulling details because I just happened to watch that arc. Um, and and uh, Bo-Katal, she's, she's in 
uh, a, a character squad called the Death Squad, and they're kind of like these terrorist uh, Mandalorians um, who've kind of separated and want to do their own thing. And she kind of explains a little bit about how um, they they don't want to do the traditional Mandalorian way because it's it's t- it's toxic and it's 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 too much. And she kind of comes around at the end a little bit to understand that they're just doing it about to kind of save their themselves. But I think. Uh, what's funny is like these are kind of the details that were in that arc <laughs> like it's very very similar yeah. uh but uh, also cool to kind of see the real life transformation of of katie sackoff like the voice into the actual character which is i don't know if that's been done before but we're about to see it again well no and no, i guess not again because i was gonna say we'll see it with ahsoka but that's not the same voice that oh did katie sackoff do bo katano's voice Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool that they like. Yeah, right on. Well, she, she did, and she, I, the animation looks the same. Do you guys uh, feel like it was appropriate that they were on an aquatic planet in this, since it felt like they were treading water for so long? Oh, ouch! Wow. What? An, <laughs> I'm sorry. I like. I. Tr- I yeah. What an uninspired uh, 35 minutes of television. It was Ooh. a short. It was a short episode. So I. So it's like I, it's, I don't feel like actually like strongly about it. Where like I, I'm angry, but it's just like I. I, I it, here's the thing: is that I feel I you know I think that this season has been so good so far. The first two episodes were so great, and like we said in the last uh, episode of the pod, how they kind of made this adjustment to make everything have him going forward cool, and that's true with this. To me, the the issue that arises is one one has to do with what Chris said, which is. John Favreau is starting, and I know Dave Filoni is like a huge part of the creative force of this show, but it seems like John Favreau's um, understanding or imagination about Mandalorian kind of culture is hitting, like he's hitting his head against the ceiling a little bit. Because without like um, self awareness, like when they took off their helmets and he went, Where'd you get that armor? I was like, Really? Like he's like, How many of those beats are we going to have this season? It's only been three episodes. That someone takes off a Mandalorian helmet and he asks where they got the armor and he's going to threaten to fight them. Then he just seems to accept their answer. That is the thing that I did like about this episode, though, was the the like expansion of them being like, there's many different ways of the Mandalore. Like, we're not buying into the right. original thing. Or like, you know, they think that he's kind of an extremist in his own way, um, which I think I- is interesting. But other than that, I felt like this episode was just people firing lasers down hallways. <laughs> I'm sort but of that's, confused. I'm sort of confused, Ryan, because like, so I did I contradict hmm. myself? Well, no, I don't think you. I don't think you okay, contradicted thanks. yourself, and I and I don't think you're. I, I don't. Act, I don't think I disagree with you, except in how in in how in my reaction to it, which sure. is that like to me, structurally, this episode accomplishes what I loved so much about episode two. Which is that there is a there is a treading water element, and what I like about the treading water element, as you're putting it, like which is a negative spin, is that like is that it makes it more episodic. It makes it more like yeah, there's a bigger arc here. He's trying to get Baby Yoda to the Jedi, but the imp- the reason you watch the show is that it's this monster of the week thing. It's like mm. he's off on a mission. What's right. going to happen? And so like last week's, which we kind of universally all were like really enamored of yeah with like the cave spider you know weirdness episode and the eggs and stuff maybe it had a little more going on i guess because there was the whole arc with like the mom and her her eggs but i don't know i'm looking at this episode going like no they did the same thing here he's trying to get them and and they they sent him on a separate adventure we learned more about the mandalorian like you you pointed out the thing that that i think was kind of the episode's big reveal which is that like there's a larger world at play here with Mandal. Like not everything mm-hmm. we've told you about mm-hmm. Mandalorians is true about all Mandalorians. Um, not all Mandalorians. Um, hashtag. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but like, I, so if you're so on this Twitter, episode, Mandalorian question mark hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that'll so break this, Twitter. So the episode <laughs> that the episode did like work for me overall. I. I I didn't have the like level of delight because it was like it wasn't quite as it wasn't quite as weird and like offbeat mm-hmm. and silly as some of the elements of the previous one. Um and I think the other thing that might be triggering some of your reaction Ryan is that I I think they do the 
you guys talked last episode about the way they drop like Easter eggs for fans and how, you know, you, you mentioned specifically like the X wings, like wing, uh, going to Mm -hmm. attack formation. Right. And that was like simultaneously, like it advanced the plot of the episode. Cause you're like, Oh, they're changing. Something's up. But for fans, we also knew like, Oh, they're going to attack formation. He needs Mm -hmm. to be defensive. They're hostile. So this episode like didn't have that. What this episode had was more like, here's some dialogue about, the easter eggs and lore yeah i think that so my my main issue with this episode and again it's like fine it's like fine to me but it it has more to do with the mechanics of the episode which is it's doing everything the last episode did except i feel like it's a, in the writing it's a little lazier because it's like really letting the, the strings show like as soon as they mm-hmm. were like he asks wh- like where to bring baby yoda and they literally say out loud First, you have to help us with our mission. <laughs> and I was like, okay, like, come on. And then the mission is just so uninteresting to me. Because hey. it's like, it's, it reminded me of the bank heist last season, except right. like a little less so hey, where... You've, uh, you, you heard of Bosk? How about Bosch? Bosch. <laughs> <laughs> I was so glad that Bosch was Jesus. in this episode. But I think that like from an action standpoint, if you want to have like all these action scenes in a show or a movie... People firing at each other down hallways is the least tense or interesting thing. There's literally, like, no obstacles until you come up with the solution. You know, like, most action scenes... Most action scenes need to have this element. Like, this is why, like, Mad Max Fury Road works so well. Because every action scene has this, like, scrambling element where there is a specific thing someone's trying to get to. And someone's trying to stop them from doing it. And in this, it's like, we're just firing at each other. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and I mean, that I, happened about three times. <laughs> I, I I don't disagree with you on that, but it kind of felt the same as the last episode. Like, I, I don't know. I guess the reason that it feels so different is like, okay, they did it again. You know, they're, they're doing it again like they did it in the last season and then did it last week. So I get the feeling of it being repetitive, but it still kind of feels similar in that, you know, I'm along for the ride mm-hmm. in this in these episodes because of them giving me tidbits of where he's going and – yeah, you know, that doesn't quite, it's not going to be fulfilling for long, but I, I don't know. I, I, I sort of gave myself to it, but I also agree with you about the hallway because to me, I just yeah. got Rogue One vibes. I got, I was yeah. like, okay, so we're just doing this. And at times that can be joyful and I mm-hmm. enjoyed it, but is it actually serving much more purpose than being like, here's the thing that you always thought you could do with your action figure. And here's yeah. what you yeah, loved yeah, yeah. about the Mandalorian characters in the clone wars and you always wanted to see them in live action doing the battle that they were going to do here it is but is that really yeah us much? i mean we just well, you got we got a lot of just we've had so much empire hallway battles before <laughs> too like it's 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 well-trodden territory so like i yeah i i could see absolutely and especially now when the stakes of action scenes are just raised in general it's like people shooting each other down a hallway where there's obvious cover is like, it's really hard to make that more exciting than it actually yeah, is. Yeah, I was just like, if they're doing this, then like, why do they need to be again? Like, I understand there needs to be like laser blasts and stuff. I'm not implying that the whole thing be an existential, like contemplation on what they're supposed to do with these <laughs> weapons. But it's, it's more that like, like you said, in a hallway with obvious cover, they might as well be do- like, I'd rather see them sneaking around something at least with like a little bit of tension to it. Where it's like, let's just do this until someone throws a thermal detonator. <laughs> well, well, and there was to me, also... that was just such a large chunk of the episode. I also thought that yeah. Bosch's performance was a little odd. Well, he was an American. Mm. He had an it, American accent for a. That uh... was that. <laughs> the pilot in his ship was was doing great work, though. Yeah, it was. I it actually, was I liked truly him. Truly, his casting was like great. confounding to me. Oh, I thought he was unbelievably miscast. I, was no, the, the pilot, pilot was or Bosch. The, Bosch. We're talking okay, about no, Bosch. I'm talking about the pilot. I I like the pilot. The pilot was the working pilot. for me. Yeah, we all. Yeah, we all. The pilot, the pilot had this wonderful where they say like they're they're stuck in the um the cargo control area and the the pilot does like a four step reaction take. That's amazing. <laughs> he, he like makes a sound come out of his mouth. He goes ah. like he. Yeah, it's really. Great. And now it's true or I false? He is doing. also Bosch. He plays. With, he replaces <laughs> Bosch in the seventh season. Is that true? Um, Bosch, the next generation, I believe. He's, yeah. Uh, no, there. Uh, I, I'm thinking about why the like sort of why the the hallway shootout is boring, other than it's just like yeah, we've seen it before. But but there's also the added element. I, I think this is actually a key uh, because like 
shootouts, like, they do still work for me in movies, usually, right? But mm-hmm. the reason this one doesn't is because you've got stormtroopers shooting at Mandalorians. So it's literally action figures shooting at action figures. Like, <laughs> like oh, part yeah, of eight no guys makes, who like, all look the same shooting like, at four people who all look the same. That is part true. Of what makes it, part of what makes it, like, great when you watch, like, Lethal Weapon is it's, like, Danny Glover and Mel Gibson playing off each other is funny. You know, and like, or, or, you know, pick any, you know, Eddie Murphy, you know, in a, in a shootout in, in Beverly Hills Cop is, is funny, you know, <laughs> and like, and that's, or there's, I think that's or there's some dialogue the... or there's tension yeah. from like the desperate, if it's played for drama, that can work too, where it's like people are really scared. But and if that's... you've got a bunch of like faceless people <laughs> just like hanging out with, with what we know is impenetrable armor. <laughs> Like, right uh, okay. yeah that's that's where like you get away you don't get away with that in movies because an actor is like mm, they got to see my face and like in tv they're like mm, it's only 10 minutes so <laughs> you'll wear the mask i think though i think <laughs> this episode to me is missing a lot of the things that the last episode had in is ter- in terms of kind of these small character building moments yeah. for the mandalorian for din jardin um like the moment he had with Amy Sedaris where we see that he starts to trust her. And then the moment, you know, he has the arc with the frog lady where she's like a job. And then he starts to actual, actually show kindness to her. And we see more of his relationship with baby Yoda. And in this, I feel like we didn't really learn anything about him, even in small ways. So, so we're missing that. So I feel like we're literally just watching like plot mechanics happen. Well, um, that's a good and I didn't him. find the plot all that interesting, which is just like, we need to get on that ship. They showed guess, him. Like it, well, I don't think. I mean, the plot wasn't. We need to get on that ship. The plot was he needs to help them to get the information he needs, which is what we've seen multiple times now. Right, and I know that like the information at the end was like the thing the, of the, the episode. Reveal. Yeah, and, how about that? Yeah, yeah, and and oh, we're yeah. still on track for my prediction that at the end of episode four we would see like a silhouette that's of Ahsoka. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but yeah, I just I I guess I didn't find the mission all that interesting, and uh, but I did acknowledge this. That, like, even though I'm working my way through Clone Wars right now, I haven't gotten to the bo stuff yet. When she Katan. was fighting on Katan. the... bo Yes. Where am I Boca getting... Raton. Oh, okay. bo Raton. <laughs> Sorry. I'm getting... You're, you're, I'm doing, Ahsoka, Ahsoka, Ahsoka you're doing Ahsoka Tano. Yeah. Ahsoka Andy Sackhoff Bo-Katano. is playing shuffleboard in Boca Raton. Yeah. Boca my, Raton. my grandfather's from Boca, R- Boca Raton. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry, Bocaton. See, that's oh, that's embarrassing. Anyway, so I, I haven't gotten to that yet, but I also acknowledge that, like, for people who are fans of the Clone Wars, fans of that character, seeing her show up in real life must have been absolutely thrilling. He, here's what. So I think Chris and I are a little bit farther in the Clone Wars, but what I what I know is that so I'm in to season five. And I've seen Bo-Katan in her first appearance, and it's a very memorable, like, uh, it, it, she's a memorable character. She immediately kind of makes an impact, um, but she appears many more times over the series, and I haven't seen any of those yet. So I actually, I do think that where they're picking her up in The Mandalorian, I think there's, like, a pretty big gap mm-hmm. in her character arc before we get to her because Mm -hmm. where i've met her like the only like it's only the visual iconography that was like cool for me and the fact that it's katie sackoff who i both like like as an actor and did the voice in the series so it's like there was like the visual moment of like oh that's so dope it's it's her she's so cool Mm -hmm. and she gets to play the character that's awesome so so there was that but but I have missed out on what is, I'm sure, a very good, thoughtful character development in Clone Wars because that's what, you know, that's what Filoni does for all his characters in that show. So I'm excited, you know, even more. We, we've kind of all been on, like, the upswing of watching Clone Wars again. Yeah. I feel yeah. like we've all yeah. been watching it. I need something um, so to fill we'll, my time between Mando episodes. Exactly. We'll do a we'll do a a big I don't know. We'll, maybe we'll go by season or or we'll we'll at some point we'll talk about it because <laughs> it's been a it's been a notable gap in our knowledge for a long time. I'm yeah, it's like sixty the... percent of Star Wars now, and yeah. <laughs> and also <laughs> and also that was the reveal of uh, uh, Sasha Sabine. Banks's character, right? Who we believe is Sabine Wren, correct? We, we do. Sabine Reno. We thought at one point. I don't. <laughs> no. I don't know now. <laughs> I, I don't I know if it can Im- be now. 
they, can't imagine it. Being they list Sabine. her. They list her as Costco Reeves. I, I guess if I'm if I'm not if I'm. Well, I think there was actually there was like two. Sorry, names who's for her? Who's Sasha Banks? The She's pro the WWE wrestler. actress. But there was when she oh, was cast. The, uh, the rumor was that she was yes. playing Sabine Wren. Correct, correct. Correct. Yes. Yeah, because she but, was the hooded the hooded figure. Right. Who we I finally just, saw this episode. Tia Which, Sikar was so good as Sabine mm-hmm. Wren that to cast a non-actor in that role would very much upset me. I don't think that that should be Sabine Wren because we. Well, I don't. I think mean, it is. for all we don't know if she can act, do we? The, no, I. She can, I she can glower. Don't know. She can sit and glower. That's what we've seen. Yeah, she looked cool <laughs> in a hood. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I. I suppose we'll find out. Yeah. I. You know, Tia Sikar is great. I played well, trades with her once. <laughs> the one thing I would say though is that for Sabine to be muted and not stand out with different colors at this point past where she was in, yeah, in Rebels would be really weird. It'd be weird if she was just like, well, going up yeah. to standard blue. Yeah, that's the thing. I see I didn't I didn't recognize I'm sure fans of Clone Wars recognized uh uh Bo Katan's helmet right away. I didn't I still had in my head I was like, Oh, maybe it is Sabine and then um and then she took the helmet off, and I thought, oh, that's Sabine. And then, <laughs> then she said her name, and I realized it wasn't Sabine. <laughs> Chris, you're not. I think you're not alone in that. And also, the level yeah. of everybody who's just decided that that was definitely Boba Fett in yeah. episode one. How does anybody know that that's definitely Boba Fett? What is the concrete yeah. example that that's Boba Fett? Yeah. I mean, I told you where I was coming from, which was, that I'm, I've like backed off that. Because like I had read an article where it, yeah. like in the headline said he was playing Boba Fett, but then it was like within the article on the Hollywood Reporter they like said it's assumed or rumored or something. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, well, that's not the same thing as like don't put it in the headline. So, but I don't know. So maybe people maybe people are trusting their headlines, not reading the news. Listen, and all people of the bad reporting the going on right now, I'm mad about this. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you think that the Mando should? wear like a a cape or a cloak or something because it seems like everyone he meets wants his armor and i feel like (laughs) we kind of let our guard down i was actually genuinely surprised at the turn of uh those the pirates kind of throwing him into the pit land with baby yoda and may i may i refer to last episode where i talked about butthole monsters oh boy (laughs) oh boy may i please go i'm I'm just saying watch that Watch that again. People need to get new ideas about monster mouths. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, the one that the ate the, the Abrams school. The one that ate the baby. I swear they just got like a package deal and all these monsters. <laughs> yeah, they just got the butthole monster models. <laughs> dot com. <laughs> don't don't models. don't put don't, that do in not, your browser. Do not go there. Um, <laughs> my God, I do wonder though. So so Chris, it, like I I think you were like sort of half joking, but the. The idea of, like, I, I think that's part of his specific sect of Mandalorian culture of, like, his, never removing uh, the helmet. The armor is showy, and it, yeah. it, it almost is, like, the idea of, um, of like, a knight of the round table or uh, something. Sure, where it's, it's, like, indeed, where it's indeed. like, I'm so good and so confident and so feared and, and reputed throughout the galaxy you can't touch me, even if you know who I am. Right. His entering a room with that armor is like a challenge. Yeah. Yeah, like without him saying anything. And thank God for the jetpack as kind of a, a plot mechanism. They can go anywhere. <laughs> they can do it. <laughs> they can literally, do I was anything surprised about the pirates throwing Baby Yoda into the giant butthole because I <laughs> didn't know why they did that. And then after they did it, they were all dead, and I still didn't understand why they, they did it. So maybe really? you guys can tell they, me why they did it. You didn't. You, they I mean, just, I just wanted his. It, yeah. They wanted his Beskar. They and wanted to kill him. Yeah, and they were. I think him, it was yeah. like get rid of the evidence. And what what is interesting about this season is so far, everyone seems to have like placed a higher value on his armor than on Baby Yoda. Which like in season one, the right. threat was always like they're going to get the baby, they're going to get the child, and now it's like the child so far has not been the focus of like what people want. Everybody wants the best car which is because it's valuable so i don't know at some point that's going to come up where it's like i'm wondering if they're going to try and pull like a turn on us where it's like at some point he assumes that what people want is the armor but they actually mm-hmm. want the child One cool thing that star wars does and has always done and i just came to this realization watching these episodes is that 
the the kind of the transfer of information from planet to planet and galaxy to galaxy, it's not like a one to one parody with what we have on our planet Earth. Like if news breaks, you could say almost relatively the whole world knows what's going on now, just the way our communication works. In Star Wars, the fact that like some people know about the Jedi, some people don't know about the Jedi, some people know that the Empire still has control, some people like I think that kind of old thought thinking of communication back then really helps with these aspects where it's like yeah these fisher guys they don't they don't know about uh the jedi battle like they don't know they're just working they're just trying to to mine those monsters and and capture them so i think those kind of details i think they show themselves every now and then but i i i kind of appreciate that fact that like their their information schema still works like as if it was the 1970s which is i think a cool aspect of star wars and i think they kept they held on to that. Chris, were you hoping that they were hauling Raftars? I was hoping they were. <laughs> we got to see a Raftar at one point. What? <laughs> also, um, like the 1970s, it seemed like all those pirates were on cocaine. <laughs> right? <laughs> what was the... What? I, I missed something. I watched this in my car again on my iPad, and the download on Disney Plus app had a weird hiccup at minute 18, and it started playing the credits, and then I couldn't... But anyway, I finished it. Allegedly, I don't want to be getting a cease and desist from Bob so, Iger. <laughs> so, one question I had that I don't know if it was... It was probably explained in dialogue and monologue as opposed to any kind of storytelling <laughs> of finesse. Why... How was that ship... How was that Imperial ship still th- around and all those guys in Empire Imperial uniforms? They What's the deal explain. with them? They didn't explain it. They kind of let you just uh, infer the way you did with uh, Borna Herzog's character that there are factions of the Empire yeah. that are still around. Yeah. So, like he said, "Long live the Empire." One, suppo- I, I assume that what we're seeing are the ashes from which the First Order grow. Yeah. Correct. Uh, right. So they're mm. still doing stuff. They're still out there. Some guys are still wearing stormtrooper outfits, yeah. like a bunch of well, nerds. That's, that's what I mean. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like the communication chain is kind of like some people think there's still a war. Like these things, are, they're just not on or off. No, which I think well, is some, some people. Some, some people, people in, this in the southern Bosch was still on the air. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Some some people in the was some people in seasons? the southern. Some people on the southern planets are still flying the imperial flag. I don't know if you guys heard this, but the Death Star 2 never blew up. It's still out there. <laughs> also, <laughs> it was flat. Info. It was flat. It flat was a, Death the Star Death Star was flat. A flat Death <laughs> Star. Won't know that. It's <laughs> obvious. It's obvious. So, right around there, we, we. I mean, I guess we saw this early on. You talked about it, Ryan, how they do the helmet bit again. But did anybody else think, and this is from someone's knowledge who doesn't know the whole story of Bo-Katan and, and where she ends up in Clone Wars, but I thought, I'm like, oh, here's the introduction in the story for how he can eventually not have to wear the helmet all the time. Because if he sees the world of Mandalore the way they do, he can take off his helmet and we can start to see Pedro Pascal all the time. I, I mean, I said it last week, I'll say it now. John Wayne's grandson is a sweating. <laughs> I, I immediately thought... Whenever, whenever they all took off their helmets and then gave an explanation of why they were still Mandalorians with their helmets off, I immediately was like, "Somebody at Disney's like, we want to start getting our money out of Pedro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> if we're gonna pay this guy, he's gonna be on camera. He's gonna be." Or on. Pedro Pascal was like, "This show's really popular. I think I should show up on it." Right? Yeah, long. that's the. <laughs> That's why this episode. How old was is 30... Bo-Katan supposed to be? So here's the thing: is she said that she fought in the Purge. Like of Mandalore, and the Mandalorian, we saw Pedro Pascal's face, so you can't tell me that he's younger than thirty-five, because Pedro Pascal's like a thousand. <laughs> he's so he's, no, he's, he's the but, new Burt Reynolds, but he he's a great looking man, but he is in his like mid to late forties. So, but I'll be generous and say that maybe the Mandalorian is supposed to be thirty-five. How much older is Bo Katan supposed to be than him? Ryan, let me take the interstellar approach to this, depending yeah. on which planet is love. Is what love is what guided her. Yep. <laughs> oh, I see. I think. I, I, yeah. No, it's just a thing I thought of. There's yeah. probably not a good explanation. <laughs> I mean, I'm willing, and I'm willing to buy that. I just didn't know if there was something I was Katana. missing. Don't worry, I'm looking it up. <laughs> I mean, she's going to be as old as Ahsoka Tano, who's also going to show oh, wait, up. Wait, so look if it really was young. the purge, you know, Boca Katano Ren. Interesting. Boca Katano Ren. Is that something? Katana Run. There it is. Um, Katana Run. So, yeah, it's just something that... Because that, he was supposed to be like five or six, right, when the Purge happened? Yeah. 
Uh, well, but he wasn't, that he wasn't on Mandalore for the Purge. That was his home planet. Right, and he was taken in by Mandalore. There, yes. yes. So the Purge happened even, what, before that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Probably. so she's supposed to be 70? She looks great. I mean, you get a little... <laughs> you can go down the road. Um, I, Ryan, I thought of you at one moment in this episode. Aww. During the hallway <laughs> scene. You when know, did I you think, think of, of me, you Mike? Right? When did you think of me? Chris, I thought of you during the chowder. <laughs> Sam, I thought Aww. of you when he was trying to keep baby Yoda from eating the frog on the way out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But Brian, I thought of you when we had another unnecessary moment of the Mandalorian being like, I'll just give up my life for everyone here. Let me just All dive in. <laughs> yeah. All like, the time with this guy. <laughs> we, I mean, we were supposed to believe that he was this like, you know, self, self-serving self kind of uh, lone ranger kind of guy. Or lone this. gunman, I should say. Not the, not the lone ranger. And he, people aren't even asking him. He's, he's, <laughs> he's volunteering to give up his life in times when he doesn't need to. I, I People knew are trying to be. stop him from doing it. They're saying, and, let's weigh out our options. You don't need to just jump in there. <laughs> he goes, no, please. I'd, I'd rather sacrifice myself. Watch the baby. <laughs> I knew it. By the That's way, that baby's so almost gotten eaten by like 15 him. buttholes. So, <laughs> Oh, boy. What do we think? You know, the the I'd frog like to remind people our are going to take him to the Ahsoka. He could just live in Frogtown with those yeah, two people. Yeah, the frog yeah. people were being great to him. Yeah. He could. I'm sure he'd eat all their babies. I would <laughs> I like know. to remind. He learned. They were a little, he learned life. Also, it's a very funny theme because old Yoda, not baby Yoda, the non-child version of Yoda. The Yoda we all grew up with. Not Yoda. yet. You not yet. Yoda. Yoda. Um, you mean Yoda? You just mean Yoda? Just Yoda. <laughs> Who's the Yoda. man? Yoda man. No one um, else. <laughs> oh, the he was he was like eating a bunch of Luke stuff when we first met him. They're a hungry and these uh, hungry and then little, he was making stew. Dudes. The little green guys love eating, and I like it too. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> And I that'll still, do it. <laughs> I still want to get that ration pack from Galaxy's Edge that looks the same as what Luke had, so I can taste whatever that yeah. bar <laughs> breadstick hot sauce. I mean, not a bad idea since it looks like we might be looking at rations <laughs> right. soon. Need some of right? Apocalypse. We're going to need it. Anyway. We're going to need it. I do want to For, take a moment to remind our listeners that we like this show, despite a lot of the things we've said in the last. You half see what, hour. what half I wrought? I was just saying that I didn't think this episode was very good. <laughs> No, I'm so ruled. It was fun. It was it was a blast. Yeah, like it was. Don't get me wrong. The beginning I woke up reminded early to watch it. I wasn't mad at the end of it. I mean, we're on a podcast. We got to talk about something. <laughs> yeah. But like you know, it's it's better than anything else that's going out on outside my door. <laughs> <laughs> I, the beginning I of liked... it felt like gravity a little bit too. Did you get that feeling when she was the the music was kind of like the opening was great. Oh, yeah. and I Speaking thought that the, the beat of it falling into the water, yes. I genuinely it, laughed with the yeah, I laughed yeah. so hard. It was so well timed. And it's like, it was the, the kind of setup, it was the visual setup where it was like everybody knew. Like you knew with how long it was taking mm-hmm. to land that it was like, it was like that thing's going in the drink. I know it's going <laughs> to fall in the water. And then like yeah. the way they like timed it with like the kind of like big engine blowout was so funny. And it just tips on its side. I it, I loved it. I lo- and like. Else- and the, the Mon Calamar walking away. Does anyone else get stressed out when they see, like, like a lot of destruction? In, like, all I kept thinking was, that's going to take so long to fix. <laughs> Maybe it's because I just had a whole car incident yes. where I had to get it I, fixed. I like but... when TV shows just ignore damage and, like, the next scene, everything's back to normal again. <laughs> they, need, I, they need to pull I, one of those. I kind of like that, though. It seems... I, my guess is that this is going to be a runner for, like the majority of season two that like i think the i think they're really gonna take the razor crest like put it through its paces and it's gonna be yeah it's gonna be a true hunk of junk that people can fall in love with sort of like another hunk of junk we might know well, i'm talking like about harrison Hasbro. ford i'm talking Hasbro's about harrison releasing, ford <laughs> hasbro's releasing it's it's beautiful razor crest that is modeled after season one and now the rest of the show it's going to be this net covered <laughs> No, no, no. I think they'll. Yeah, I so, think they'll. Fi- they'll fix it at like know, episode ten. It's gonna you tell know? you, you want, So own. if you want to keep up, you buy the Razor Crest toy that Hasbro made, and you get a hammer. <laughs> and you, right, you yeah. just start making DIY. things well, happen. How many that's prams, canon, baby? Fill that's how many prams has Baby Yoda gone through now? He's on at least three that have been wrecked. Wait, how many what? Carriers? Yeah, yeah. They're oh, prams. Yeah, yeah. They're called prams. Yeah. 
prams? Really? Oh, yeah. that's, that's, that's a space nice. a um, space pram. Um, I actually think don't they reference it in the show? Uh, Warner Herzog says open the pram, doesn't he? I mean, who knows what the hell that guy's ever saying. <laughs> I was a little the worried with the, with the kind of, of the pain. <laughs> the crunched metal door when they're pulling Baby Yoda out of that. I was like, watch his head. Sometimes I love yeah, when they, they grab Somebody him. bumped him. Somebody bumped the puppet. It was pretty yeah. funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was that wrestler. The it was out the, there yeah. who, thought, who thought Baby Yoda was really dead. There's like one kid who was distraught. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, but I was totally uh, caught by the moment that he shoved him into the pit or into the watery pit because I was like, "Whoa, what happened?" That it got me, and I was. That's I what I'm that, talking about. That they find moments of timing in the edit that it's like that caught me off guard, and I'm not. I'm very impressed that they're surprising me. Like that's not it because most you were shows thinking, aren't. How big me. is the monster if that's its butthole? <laughs> I think I thought anyway. when that happened, I thought. For a split second, I was like, "Are they gonna surprise me and do an like an underwater episode?" Like I thought oh. that there was a chance that he like that this episode, which was setting up to be one thing, ended up with him like rocket packing underwater, and I was yeah. very excited for that. Well, I'm, Sam, if they did that, we're not having this conversation. <laughs> oh, we're talking about what a great episode of television this. <laughs> I'm also, uh, I'm also I still waiting. liked it. I yeah. liked the when he did I liked the, it a lot. Look, when he did the chart I, I, I'm completely with you guys in terms of like characterization and like you know, does it really jive with his motive? But when he did like make the charge with his uh I don't know, whatever the his grenades were, like were those uh uh they they were like thermal, mini thermal, thermal detonators. Thermal detonators. Thermal when he like made the charge through, I was like, This is cool because it does show that despite being like impenetrable, he's not invulnerable, right? right. Like He's alive, but There's he's still getting like he's getting like slowed down and like it. I don't know. It was the kind of thing of like it doesn't have the impact though of like we saw him in episode one fly into the mouth of a dragon. <laughs> and this one, he's like running towards a couple guys with guns. It's like, and eh. then he kind of just like trips and like whoop whoop whoop, kind of throws the grenade. <laughs> but I still, it's still like I don't know. I still enjoyed yeah. it. You know, like it still worked for me. I like seeing a hero. He's a hero. I thought maybe until next like, talk episode to where someone drops their sandwich in a well and he risks his life to go get it for him. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, like, what were you gonna say? I I want to see more great the great miracles of of Baby Yoda though. We haven't <laughs> had a good one of the in a while. Yeah. Like he needs, we need to see his. We need I to expect, see him. You want to uh, see his great works? His great works. Like I want to see him like lift that sea creature out of the th- or like I thought he was gonna like take one of those eggs and make a creature happen out of it. Like I want to see. Some reason why we're why we're protecting the child. Well, I thought he was going to take out all those quarren that said you killed my brother. I was expecting him to like just force choke yeah. them all at once. I thought that's that... a good question, Chris. Like you yeah. say, he keeps eating eggs, and and we're worried that he's going to eat the babies and stuff. And uh, what? <laughs> Maybe Baby Yoda's just a jerk. <laughs> that's <laughs> well, what I'm someone getting has at. posited that he is actually dark side. He could be a dark side force user. But I I would say. This is the whole point of Star Wars. You have the ability to go either way. Yeah. And as a child, you're probably going to indulge the bad impulses more quickly than you would as an adult. Yeah. Well, then it's a good yeah, thing they're... you have such a stoic person like the Mandalorian watching after you. You got to have a good papa. Yeah. The uh, the other part that I thought was going to go the opposite way was when the you mentioned it, the scene where they're like, you killed my brother. I really thought he, that was going to be a misdirection and he was gonna say good because i hated that guy or something like that i really but then it just turned into be a shootout but i was uh i do have to say i was impressed with the number of different and yes they could have just done this through editing but how many um quarren animatronic tentacles were going at once like it felt like we saw eight different uh quarren with their tentacles on the move in Mm -hmm. pretty quick shots it just made me like wow i'm glad they've got so many quarren heads at the ready they just went file (laughs) they went file open Pirates of the Caribbean yeah. dragon. This, the I timeline. was about to say this. <laughs> apropos of nothing, that second Pirates of the Caribbean movie came out, I think, in 2006. It, that CGI is incredible. It's The Davy Jones CGI is unreal. It it's, still looks amazing. Nothing's better than that. I, it's nothing crazy. Nothing is like top that. Turns out that you just have to throw all the money at it. <laughs> and Bill Nye. And Bill, Bill Nye, Nye, of course. So, yeah. Unmistakable, even with tentacles on his face. <laughs> but his eyes are so great. His eyes tell everything. Um, I do, Chris, you mentioned the music. I have not really 
noticed as much what Ludwig has been doing in the first two episodes, even though I know it's been good. I, sometimes my ear just is paying attention to the story and not to the music. Mm-hmm. The music during the assault on the ship was my favorite bit he's done so far this season and my favorite part of that scene. I thought the music was wonderful during all of that. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't clock the music this episode, but I but I was also like thinking that the past two episodes it's been great. So mm-hmm. I'm sure it was I'm sure it was at a high level off to Yeah, it was, look, it, I'm gonna rewatch. I think these. at that point, I, Sam, <laughs> you were you were adjusting where your car was so a bus could pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the mu- Sam, the music isn't hey, I'm driving you a bus. <laughs> um, <laughs> the the music was it was very deliberate in that scene you're talking about, Mike. I thought it was really cool. Like it it played yeah. with the stakes. And I would say, I know, just still speaking to that scene, I know we weren't all infatuated with it. I'm very impressed, not only that the costumes match what we saw in the animated series, and now I haven't seen the whole series with what Bo-Katan has done, but I've seen the way the Mandalorians look. I'm impressed with how the costumes fall and lay on the actors and the way that they looked so accurate to what they were as animated characters in the live-action show. I was just impressed by that. I don't know. Maybe I might. Have I agree, that. and that's a hard thing to yeah. pull off to like make a cartoon into a person. You know what I mean? Well, I've yeah. tried with the witches that I've been commuting with, but um, <laughs> no, work. it's it's really it's very rarely do you see that done where some a character that was originated as a cartoon now has like a live action counterpart, especially in something this huge. Yeah. So it's cool to see them doing that, and I can't wait to see Ahsoka Boko Ratano. <laughs> um, <laughs> I really like. I really can't wait to see what Rosario Dawson does, especially now that I've been watching so much more Clone Wars and I love that character so much. Um, that's gonna be do, dope as hell. So, but your bet, and I think you're right, Ryan, is that we don't see yeah. her except for a shadow at the end of the episode. So we're waiting. That's we've got still, two more I, I, weeks. Yes, two more weeks before we see real Ahsoka. Correct. I think wow. that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Thanksgiving, the day after Thanksgiving, oh we'll all be rubbing our tummies and lo- looking at Ahsoka. Is, wait, <laughs> is Thanksgiving really in two weeks? So. And also the I, I the Lego Star Wars Holiday Special comes out in five days, so there's no way the next episode would be the Ahsoka reveal. Yeah, they don't want to cannibalize this fandom like that. <laughs> Anything else that we missed in the episode that anybody else liked? I mean, I like Titus Welliver. I'll say I, I, mean, I enjoyed him. Man in Black from Lost. Not only Bosch, he's from Lost. I found his performance very bad. I didn't <laughs> feel that way. I think they've been having it. I'll be honest. I think they've been having a guest star issue. I feel like it feels like leaning too much on a guest star of a week. No, like I didn't think that Timothy Oliphant was very good. I didn't think that Bosch was very good. Oh, well, to me, I'd say Sackoff is more of the Oliphant character level. Like Bosch was, you know, she was good. She was good. She was solid. Yeah. Hey, check out season nine of Bosch available on (sighs) iTunes, Hulu. Yeah. (laughs) While you're out there, uh, check out Goliath and uh, Rubicon. (laughs) Uh, Thanksgiving. Stay at home. Don't go to your family. <laughs> Sam, Eat alone. Been saying this for years. <laughs> it's an opportunity for all the introverts out there. Oh. Um, I don't know. I think this is a great opportunity to have your own family Thanksgiving pod where you just yell go. at each other. Oh, go. I thought you meant where you record yourselves talking about Star Wars. A just Thanksgiving pod. Just don't record well, I yourself think we eating. Do it's not going to turn out like you think it is. <laughs> Mm-mm. And you know what? No one white meat is overrated. <laughs> Just make the turkey legs and the wings. <laughs> it's always dry. I don't care how much you brine it. <laughs> what is the baby Yoda side for turkey? What's the preferred side for baby Yoda? Babies. Turkey eggs. <laughs> yeah, he makes the turkey watch it eating its eggs. <laughs> Well, that is going to do it for this week's edition of the Droids You're Looking For, a Star Wars podcast. Email us, droidspot at gmail.com. Let us know your thoughts on the season so far. Are you in the camp of Sam, Chris, and I, or Ryan in this last episode? Or have you loved the first two but didn't love this one? Let us know your thoughts, droidspot at gmail.com, droidspot on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And, uh, of course, check out that YouTube playthrough. Don't miss it. Actually, I did get an email today. YouTube said that uh, one of those Fallen Order videos was not appropriate for children, and we needed to designate it as so. <laughs> hey, so make it waves. I have to make a change on that Wait. before we get in trouble. Wait. Hold on. That's not what? a joke. That's not a joke. Wait, so one of the Fallen Order YouTube videos of my famous for- Fallen Order playthrough? 
is supposedly got flagged as not safe for children. No, it's just supposedly directed at children. Oh, uh, because it's a video game thing, and There's so just, it's not yeah. COPA compliant. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Which I don't know if that's one hundred percent true, but you know we'll see what they say and uh, we'll figure it out. So those the episodes are still up there. Watch them while you can. That's a peek are, behind the sauce. Wait, are we in real legal trouble here? <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, that'll do it for the last step. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Because those videos are my primary source of income. So when Ryan <laughs> doesn't appear on the next cut. episode, you'll all know what happened. <laughs> you forget a cut from those? <laughs> I, must have, oh, I did keep talking about the butthole monsters. <laughs> <laughs> that is going to do it for this week's edition of the Droids. We'll catch you next week for another discussion of the Mandalorian. What they throw? Annie. Butthole. I can't, I can't <laughs> believe I said Bo-Katano so many times. This is humiliating.